The transportation of nutrients, wastes, and cell products within the cell is vital to its ability to function normally. Such transportation is facilitated by the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, which forms an interconnected highway system on which molecules can move from one part of the cell to another. In electron micrographs, the ER appears as loose strings running throughout the cytoplasm. These structures are actually delicate membranes of sacs and tunnels. There are two different types of ER. One type, called rough endoplasmic reticulum, appears to be covered with tiny spheres. Rough endoplasmic reticulum extends from the nucleus and is indeed covered with small structures called ribosomes, which are responsible for the rough appearance. The rough ER connects to the nucleus and is important in transporting certain substances, such as proteins, into and out of the nucleus. Cells that produce large numbers of proteins have more rough ER than those that produce fewer proteins. In addition to providing a surface area for ribosomes, rough ER serves as a storage area for newly synthesized molecules. Another type called smooth endoplasmic reticulum has no ribosomes attached to its surface and thus appears much smoother than rough ER. Like rough ER, smooth endoplasmic reticulum serves as a storage area, mainly for proteins that will later be exported out of the cell. Ribosomes are the most numerous structures in the cell that may or may not be attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Ribosomes, which are composed of RNA and proteins, are the primary site of protein synthesis. Since all living things rely on proteins for cell maintenance and growth, it is easy to understand why ribosomes are so abundant. The location of ribosomes within a cell provides an indication as to their specific functions. Those located on the rough endoplasmic reticulum synthesize proteins that will eventually be used in the cell's plasma membrane or exported out of the cell. Ribosomes that float freely in the cytoplasm synthesize proteins that will be used inside the cell. Every eukaryotic cell has a uniquely shaped organelle called the Golgi apparatus. Here you see the structure of the Golgi apparatus, which appears as flattened sacs stacked on top of each other. The Golgi apparatus sorts, processes, packages, and delivers proteins and lipids throughout the cell. The proteins and lipids may remain inside the cell, be used in the plasma membrane, or be exported outside the cell. Thus, cells that produce high quantities of proteins and lipids have a very extensive Golgi apparatus. Lysosomes are membrane-enclosed vesicles that form in the Golgi apparatus. They may contain over 40 different powerful enzymes that enable the cell to digest and destroy large molecules. Lysosomes help white blood cells destroy foreign substances, such as viruses and bacteria that invade the body. Lysosomes also recycle older or damaged organelles. By engulfing selected organelles and digesting them with powerful enzymes... Lysosomes are membrane-bound vesicles that contain hydrolytic enzymes. The hydrolytic enzymes degrade proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, and carbohydrates and are formed in the endoplasmic reticulum. These enzymes are then transported to the Golgi apparatus by transport vesicles. The lysosomes arise from the Golgi apparatus. When particles such as viruses or bacteria are ingested by phagocytosis, the lysosome fuses with the particle containing vesicle called a phagosome, and delivers the hydrolytic enzymes. Lysosomes also fuse with organelles such as old mitochondria. This results in the destruction and recycling of these structures. You may have heard the mitochondrion referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. This important organelle generates energy in the form of ATP to keep the cell alive. Some cells may have one large mitochondrion, 
More often, however, cells contain hundreds or even thousands of mitochondria. Cells that require more energy, for example, kidney, liver, and muscle cells, have many more mitochondria than cells that require less energy. Structurally, mitochondria vary in size and shape. However, all mitochondria have two membranes, an outer membrane, which is smooth, and an inner membrane, which is arranged in a series of internal folds called Christi. The many folds of Christi provide an enormous surface area where vital chemical reactions occur. This chemical activity in turn provides energy for the cell. Mitochondria are semi-autonomous, that is, they can grow and self-replicate within the cell. Each mitochondrion contains its own ribosomes and a small amount of DNA. Interestingly, mitochondria resemble bacteria in size and biochemistry. And some scientists believe that eukaryotic mitochondria evolved from ancient bacteria.